Hey guys, this is a clip from our podcast, Color Me Bloody. You can find us on iTunes at Color Me Bloody MMA Podcast. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Color Me Bloody. You can also get in contact with us via email, Color Me Bloody MMA at gmail.com. All right. Thanks, guys. We're a weekly podcast. Check us out. Welcome to Interview Land, Color Me Bloody Podcast. This is Mike Turpin, and I'm here with Ultimate Fighter Season 18 contestant Sarah Morris. Sarah, glad you could take the time to be on our show. Yeah, no problem. Glad to be here. No, Awesome. An ongoing bit on this show is about pronouncing certain fighters' last names. Your last name is Morris, right? Honestly, like everyone in my family pronounces it differently, so I don't even know. <laughs> that's the thing i swear i have been trying to figure this out all season but they keep pronouncing it so many different ways finally i found a video where you actually said your name so that's why i went with morris was it at least a little frustrating constantly hearing your name pronounced differently on a television show being watched by over a million people or since your family kind of threw that one out the door do you not really care yeah i don't really care i i I think it's funny when people are like, oh, they keep mispronouncing your last name. I'm like, I don't know. Some of my family says it like that, too. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, that is funny. It sort of depends. Like, we say it differently if someone's trying to spell it, you know. You don't yeah. want to say Morris because they'll spell it M-O-R-R-I-S. So, oh, okay. yeah, you sense. sort of say it differently for different circumstances, I think. Yeah. Uh, but before we get into the ultimate fighter, I'd like to get a little bit of background. You had your first amateur fight back in 2007. Can you take us back before that fight? How long had you been training martial arts? Um, that fight was about 11 months after I started training. Okay. So 2006 at some time. Well, you know, and women's MMA hasn't really been on the mainstream for very long. Was there any part of you back then that thought you could actually one day be fighting for a profession? Um, no, honestly, I didn't even want to fight then. I, um, I didn't think I was ready. And my coach at the time was like, oh, I got you a fight. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not ready. He's like, oh, well, we already confirmed it. So if you want to back out, you can. And I'm not the type of person that backs out of things, so Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> at, at what point did you actually think it could become like a, a serious kind of career path if everything went well? Like, I don't know what year it really took off in the mainstream. I mean, I know there was the stuff, um, you know, with uh, Stri Strike Force and all that, and there was other women's MMA, but I don't know at what point, you, you know, it actually became a potential profession where it could actually be your day job. Like, is that kind of a recent thing for you, or did that kind of happen several years ago? Um, for it being my, my day job, I honestly didn't know if that would happen, but um, I was hoping for it. And when I realized that, you know, I wanted to be the best in the world in this sport, it was um, when I got the opportunity to train with Rosie Sexton about four years ago. So that sort of inspired me, if, you know. Yeah, awesome. I'm meeting uh, this person that did it. Why can't I do it, you know? Yeah, exactly. That That's great, you know. And, I mean, look look how far women's MMA has come since then. So, yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit, really. And people seem to be loving all the fights that have been happening, especially since the UFC, uh, you know, has kind of joined forces with WMMA. Um, we're we're going to dive right into the thick of it with the Ultimate Fighter. It's no secret that there was a little bit of a struggle on Team Tate after the semifinals with Disconnect and potential favoritism, and a lot of people think you were getting the short end of the stick when it comes to coaching. I mean, no disrespect to Misha, but one of her good friends was on the team. After watching the episodes unfold, do you still feel like there was some unfair favoritism for Juliana over yourself leading up to your semifinal fight? Um, I definitely think there was. I mean, I fought Juliana before, and I'm sure we all know who, how that ended. So, you know, with my coach there, uh, things are a totally different story. So uh, I think everyone would have seen that if my coach was there as well as hers. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, we, we talked to Raquel Pennington recently, and she gave you a lot of props for having to fight back-to-back -back so close together between your fights with Peggy and Juliana. How far apart were those fights, and how do you think it affected you? Um, I think it was about 10 days apart from each other, so... It definitely affects me a lot. I, I'm one of the bigger people in the house. I cut a lot more weight than most people. So to 
cut that much weight, get up for a fight, and then to drop it right away was really difficult. Yeah, Ra- Raquel actually mentioned that it seemed like you were the one person who wasn't able to celebrate your win because the second you won your fight, the semifinals were picked. And then you were immediately planning on your next opponent, and the house was already focused on the semis. Was it hard not being able to enjoy and acknowledge your win over Peggy Morgan? Um, Yeah, to some extent. I mean, like, you know, when we fight in the house, we don't really get to celebrate it for another five months until the world sees it, so... It does kind of suck if you win a fight and no one's really there to say, like, congrats, you know? Yeah. It's, you know, what's the point of fighting if, if, you know, you don't get any credit for it? Yeah, I mean, like you said, there aren't even, like, fans cheering. There's no, like, post-fight interview. I mean, it's like, it is weird because, I mean, that's the UFC. That's a UFC kind of win, but it's, like, on even less of a level than probably an amateur win because there's only like 20 people out there watching it. And if they're already focused on something else, I could definitely see how that's kind of a really uh, ironic or kind of awkward, not what you'd expect uh, feeling. Yeah, it was definitely different. I mean, like I'm not bothered by it now, but at the time it just, it sort of sucked. Everyone else, you know, got their attention. And especially with me, with uh, Cody, missing weight and stuff like I didn't have any support really while I was cutting weight as well so it was sort of just like everything was sort of forgotten about for me yeah that's unfortunate um cheesecake is quite the nickname I'm sure you get asked this in every single interview you do but uh how did you wind up with that uh for my first pro fight I had a friend sort of dare me to come out to the song called cheesecake by the Muppets Okay. And, yeah, so I did that, and afterwards, everywhere on the internet with the results, it said Sarah Cheesecake Morris. And people (laughs) with, like, nicknames, they didn't even have their nicknames beside it. I was the only one, and it said Cheesecake, so I was like, okay, I'll stick with that. I I like it. It's a quirky nickname. I mean, it doesn't, you know, sometimes uh, nicknames are just a little too, uh, I don't want to say... I'm not a big fan of the, uh, you know, badass extreme nicknames and stuff. I, I like a quirky nickname every now and then. So Yeah, I'm the same way. I, you know, I like to look as innocent as possible before I smash someone's face in. So yeah, yeah, now definitely. people are going to know my style, but up until now, no one knew who I yeah. was. So yeah, I mean, coming makes... with a nickname like Cheesecake, people don't think you can fight. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it fits you with, you know, you let your hair frizz out at the way ins. You always have like a kind of a quirky uh, style and, and dress and all that. So it definitely makes sense. Um, you know, th- there's no there's no proper segue for this next question. Uh, transgender women's MMA fighter Fallon Fox has been quite the polarizing topic. Born as a man in 1975, was over 30 when he decided to get gender reassignment surgery. Do you have an opinion on whether Fallon Fox should be able to fight in women's MMA? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty funny. I joke about it with my team that all the guys on my team should get sex changes and <laughs> and just dominate the women's divisions. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be pretty funny just to see them smash people other than me women other than me yeah. but um i don't know i don't do enough research into it to see all the different whatever's that people argue with so i can't really say but i mean there's not as many women fighters as there are guys so man if we can you know i'd fight a guy so why not a transgender yeah no you definitely know? and <laughs> it's like we have no women to fight so might as well bring some guys over get them to have sex changes so we have people to fight yeah no i mean if anything that's just another uh notch in the belt of something badass you've accomplished but um <laughs> you know and, and hey it doesn't even matter because fallon isn't even fighting on that competitive of a level anyway so maybe that would kind of change things if it was you know maybe like the most dominating fighter in women's mma um I must tell you, I work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, uh, that literally was in my head, and I'm like, okay, Mike, I don't want a fighter bash, but cyborg, 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 cyborg. Um, uh, I, I must tell you, you seem so much more intense, level-headed, and focused than even most of the men on the show. There are times when you look downright scary, and I mean that in a good way. Do you think mental toughness is one of your big advantages when it comes to fighting? 
Um, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's pretty much everything in the sport as long as you're training, you know, even if you're not training. If you think you can win, then you have a very good chance of winning. If someone can't break that from you and you continue to think that you're going to win, you know, you generally win. So it's when people break you. So you need to have that mental toughness to fight and to win. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Cool. Uh, That's uh, all I got for you right now. I'm going to send it over to my co-host, Alex Perry, for a few more questions. Hey, Sarah, Alex here. Thanks for taking the time with us today. No problem. So, Sarah, would you say the whole experience of the Ultimate Fighter was the most taxing physical and mental test you've ever had to go through? And what makes it so challenging, in your opinion? Um, I've actually gone through some pretty rough stuff. So um, that definitely wasn't the worst, although it definitely wasn't the best. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, it was really hard on the body to fight three times in six weeks and to make weight each time. But, um, you know, it's a great experience all in all, um, something that most people don't get to do. And it definitely put me on the radar. So that's all I was really looking for. And that's what I accomplished. Very cool. Now, I've taken up jiu-jitsu as a hobby myself, so I can really appreciate a good grappler such as yourself. Do you ever compete in just grappling tournaments on their own, or and are you ranked in jiu-jitsu as far as like a belt goes? Um, I'm ranked in no-he jiu-jitsu. I'm a purple belt, but um, I've only done one jiu-jitsu competition when I first started training. I had to wait like 10 hours to compete, and I thought that was bullshit. <laughs> so I haven't really done much competing, and I've also had... I've just had fights lined up back-to-back, so I never was really able to, and then it always fall through right away. They're, like, right after a tournament, and then my opponent would pull out or something like that, so I haven't had the chance to go in as many tournaments as I would have liked to, and I I was also working full-time before as well, so it made it difficult. Yeah, that makes sense with the time constraints. You know, speaking of grapplers... Uh, Shayna Baszler is pretty competitive in that area as well. I think you versus Shayna would be an incredible fight. What do you think about that matchup? Um, I think that'd be a great matchup. I mean, that's that's one that I've wanted. I think she's amazing and talented. You know, like I I don't want to fight bums. I want to prove myself. So when I fought Tara, I was stoked about that. You know, I'd love to the opportunity to fight Shayna. And you know, when I call out Ronda Rousey and say that I want to fight her. It's it's purely out of respect. It's not like a disrespect thing, you know. I want to fight the best, so I think Absolutely. I think and Shayna and Ronda are up there, you know. Oh yeah. Now that was going to be my next question, actually. What? Yeah, it was what you thought of Ronda Rousey as a fighter, and how you thought you matched up with her. And furthermore, do you think you can get her in one of your arm bars? <laughs> um, I definitely think I can get her in one of my arm bars. You know, you you got to be confident. Um, I'd love the opportunity to fight her. I know it probably won't be for a few more fights, but I'd love that opportunity. I think she's amazing, and what she's done for the sport is amazing. Um, yeah, I'd I'd be stoked for the opportunity to fight her, and I I think it'd be very interesting since we both got really good armbar games. That's cool. I like how you level out the confidence with the respectfulness, <laughs> but. Did you make any new relationships on the show that led to new training opportunities, or has everything pretty much stayed the same in that regard? Um, everything's pretty much stayed the same. Um, I talked to Shane a bit. I'd really like to get a chance to train with her or fight her, but um, yeah, but it's not happening anytime soon. But hopefully sometime in the future we'll get a chance to train together. I see. And just lastly, could you talk a little bit about your nutrition in general and some guidelines that you kind of like to stick with? Um, in fight camp or out of fight camp? <laughs> yeah, no, during, uh, well, actually both during fight camp and even when you're, uh, when you're out of camp. Yeah. In between fights. Yeah. Um, for the most part, when I'm in fight camps, I try to take in less carbs, eat mostly chicken and fish and vegetables and some eggs, you know, um, pretty basic, lots of salads. Um, yeah, I don't really cheat or eat a bunch of junk food, especially when I'm cutting weight. Cause I got, I got a pretty big weight cut. So I walk around quite a bit bigger than 135. Um, outside of fight camps, I, 
I definitely like my sushi and stuff. I still eat pretty clean, but I I indulge on the carbs a bit more. Well, that's all I had for you, sir. It's a pleasure talking to you here. You gave some great answers. I'm going to switch back over to Mike real quick before we wrap up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, sir, real quick on that, uh, on the weight cut thing, you say you cut more weight than most women. I actually don't really know if there's a big difference between guys and girls cutting weight. How much of a difference do you think you have between weigh-ins and fight night, typically? Um, It depends. Like, on the show, I'd probably – I got up to about 152 before I fought. Um, but, yeah, it sort of depends. Like, when you're fighting regularly, like, on a show where you weigh in at nighttime and you fight at nighttime, you don't generally have as much time to eat because you eat, like, dinner and stuff. But then the day of the fight, you always got nerves and you can't really – eat as much as normal but in the house you'd sort of have weigh-ins at noon or at four so then you'd have almost an entire day to eat so you'd get a lot gain a lot more weight gotcha gotcha uh sarah real quick before we let you go i have to ask are you able to tell us anything about possibly fighting on this saturday's ultimate fighter finale or at least that you are currently training for a fight of some sort um, I'm not allowed to say anything. I'm sorry. No, I got you. That that makes perfect sense. I'm not going to twist your arm with it. Uh, this is, you know what? I I didn't plan this question, but before we interviewed you, I I tried to do as much homework as I can, and I was watching a, an interview. And I don't even know if I'm going to wind up airing this on the podcast, but I have to ask you. We get compared a lot to another podcast called MMA Roasted and the guy I don't know Adam Hunter but I actually am a comedian and I know his co-host Todd Rex who did not uh interview you but w- was that not the most uncomfortable awkward interview ever what went through <laughs> your head when that was happening I was listening to it and I was so uncomfortable I couldn't believe it a little personal yes um I don't know I I can't even really remember it. I've had so many interviews. I just Ugh. remember parts of it. Yeah. No, it was just a lot of personal. Qu- I guess like, I don't know if you get warned, like maybe he's like, Hey, I'm a comedian. I'm going to ask you about, you know, your sex life, make some weird questions, ask you about that kind of stuff. Or if it's just like cold interview, like if we were to ask those questions, if we should warn somebody before we do it. Um, I think you should just ask them right off the bat, just to sort of like, get a reaction out of them thank you i i, I will we will take that with us into future interviews uh, <laughs> and, usually get into shit for it but it will probably be pretty funny yeah uh, hey thanks again for uh you know taking the time out to interview with us um you know you can find sarah on twitter her handle is at sarah cheesecake and you can watch her this wednesday night on the ultimate fighter season 18 tate versus rousey is there anything else you'd like to say or plug to the fight fans out there listening um, yeah, right now there's a poll on MMACanada.net that uh, is for your favorite female Canadian fighter, and I'm on that list, so go there and vote for me. It's quick and easy. It takes about 10 seconds if you're not a retard, so cool. yeah, I well, want to win that shit. <laughs> yeah, we'll go ahead and take, it'll probably take us about 15 seconds then, and we'll probably <laughs> do that right when we get uh, off uh, interviewing uh, with you. Hey, uh, thanks again, and it'll be half a color me bloody. Whoever you fight next, go out there and kick some ass. Uh, thank you. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. Hopefully talk thanks, to you Sarah. soon, Sarah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>